All right, taking forever. All right, so we've talked about the difference between information architecture and navigation. Information architecture are the pockets, the concepts, the way you organize, the way you think about the information on a website, and the relations between those things. That's your information architecture. And there are different kinds of ways that information can be conceptualized. All that has to do with the information architecture. And then there is the question of the names you use for that, which could be part of the information architecture, but it's certainly going to be part of your navigation too. And then there is the way you're going to display what you're going to display on any given page. The way to think about a website or a mobile app or anything like that is it is a keyhole problem. I have all this information on a website, all the pages. They're all out there. And now I can only show this much at any given time. And the problem is, what do I put in this page so that an arbitrary person can move through this information space from the keyhole and get what they want? Abstractly, that's the problem, right? It is a keyhole problem. The choice of what you put on this inside the keyhole is a navigational choice. And how are you going to give people the cues and the hints and the directions to find what they're looking for? Some people have used the term information sent to allow people to sort of find their way through the information space to what they're interested in. Information sent doesn't have to be a complicated concept. If you want to get to a hotel room and you start in the lobby, the number on your hotel room is the address. How do I find the address? Well, the first number usually tells me the floor. It doesn't have to, but it usually tells me the floor. OK, I know how to do that. I either take the stairs or I take the elevator. OK, where are the stairs? Where's the elevator? Navigation problem one. I know what I want. It's a step on the way to getting to my final destination. Where is it? So I've got scent. I know what I want. I can smell it. I know it's on the seventh floor. And now I look around. Oh, and I see elevator sign, information sent. It's not the elevator. It's the scent of an elevator. It's a sign. OK, I go over the elevator. It has an arrow. I go in that direction. Fine. I don't see it yet. I don't see it. Over there, I see there's an opening. I'll bet the elevator's in the opening. Now, that was, that was, that was tacit navigation. That was sort of visual layout. And the fact that typically elevator entrances are going to be in that sort of place. If we are architects, we design things like that on purpose. You walk into a space, I say, where's the bathroom going to be? You got to figure it out. You got to go somewhere. You go to a restaurant, where's the bathroom going to be? You have a good idea. You're going to get it right 50% of the time. If they design the space well, you'll get it right better than 50% of the time. So there's something you're picking up on. That stuff, ill-quantified, ill-studied, has to do with navigation. It has to do with visual layout. It has to do with visual cues. All of those can be navigational cues. Scent, in some sense, right? You can, you can, you're getting closer. So scent is gradient. It's a, the smell of the cafeteria. Uh, no, I think it's over there. OK, so there are gradients that you're following to, to take you to where you need to go. That's what it's about. All right. So we have to design our keyholes to let people get where they want to get to. How do you prioritize? So here's a typical navigation problem. 
you have a website. I'll take the example of the World Bank. Uh, so I had 300,000 pages, or maybe more, 350. Where were most of those pages? They were under research, but they didn't call it research. But yeah, it's under research, OK? But, but if, if you had four topics, and one was research, and one was uh, regions, and another was another one, how do I know that 60% uh, of all those 350,000 pages are sitting under the research topic, and only 10,000 are sitting under this topic? How do I know? I mean, surely you should be sending me. The, now, it depends how frequent I go. So it isn't just where are most of the pages. It's also where the frequently consulted pages. You want the highways to be widest where the most people are going to go, even if there aren't the most things out there. If that's where the people are going, that's what you've got to build. So all of these are somehow metaphors or analogies for the problems that we have. And then we get specific to the mechanisms or the tricks that we have. So we use drop downs for the main nav bar because if I put my mouse over research and it opens up something and it shows 20 or 40 categories, I'm going to think there's a lot of stuff there. And research as a, as a superordinate category is hiding a lot of subordinate categories, which is a hierarchical structure under there. I'm going to need that to find my way through research. So it's good to have drop downs at times. So that's a trick. We didn't used to have that in 1993 or 95, by 98, 2000, uh, Microsoft and places would have drop-downs. By, by the late 90s, they had drop-downs. And they were pretty sophisticated, let me tell you. You could find your way. They could, we, don't forget, an, a drop-down that is hierarchically structured is, is a hierarchy, which means that you can have a lot of leaves at the bottom. So if I have a drop-down with 10, Suppose there are 10. And under every one of these, there are another 10. Then I have 100 coming from here, right? I have 100. And if you can take me one more to 10 there, I got 1,000. So it's hugely powerful. I used to love it. They used to have this for their news. And they would have down here, the bottom thing was going to be the news articles. And these are going to be the classification of the news articles at this level. And this is going to be the classification of whatever the, category, the main categories of the newspaper were or the news system was. So they obviously have more than 1,000 articles at any given time. And that's how you could get it your way. So that's a mechanism. It's a trick, right? What else have we got? We've got all sorts of things. We have, uh, the, we have conventions. Do we have the, we have primary navigation. So we have the home page. Root, if you think in terms of graphs. Then we have primary navigation. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have a global toolbar. Search, maybe contact. Up there, there's some conventions. Sometimes now people put the contact down at the bottom because they also put all the social media at the bottom. Some people put all the social media up there. OK, fine, they're conventions. But we have an idea of visual expectations, right? Visual expectations. From page to page, we have those expectations so we can be fast about it. More experience, faster. OK, so we have this convention. And now I go to this one. So I go to a new page. Are you going to keep primary navigation? You should. You have to. So you're going to keep primary navigation. There's going to be a banner over here. That's going to be the banner is going to have you know, some, some kind of logo. It's going to have your primary nav somewhere along here. It doesn't have to be this way, but this is a convention. You have your global toolbar. But I'm over here, so this lights up to tell me I'm over here. And now, what about all the subordinate categories here? Are you going to put them down here? That's a convention. 
Are you going to put them on the page? Like that. Are you going to design the page so it's got little boxes so there are descriptions in it so that I have better information sent? Do I really know what a label means? Don't you have to tell me what it really means? Tell me the stuff that's inside it? Maybe it's just a name here, but really I don't really understand it until you show me all the things that are really inside it. And those are the pages below. So I could have this on the body. Maybe I do this in the body, but I still have it on the side. If I go to one of these pages, are you going to keep this? That's a decision. Here's one of your pressure points as a designer. When do you throw away primary navigation and start living in the secondary site? Suppose I've just done research and there are 200,000 pages in here. Am I going to waste my banner like that? Or am I going to start making my banner these things with now the sub-navigations under them? These are the problems you have if you're an information architect. And you've got to work with your designers. All right, that's reality. The questions and how you do it have to do with navigation because it's all about the keyhole and specifying it. Will there be a site map link? Will there be a site map? In the old days, there was always a site map. And if people went to a site map, it was testimony to the failure of your navigation because no one should ever have to go to a site map. But people had to go to a site map because they didn't know how to do things right. So they had a site map. Then there was a period when site maps were not very common. Nowadays, are there site maps? Well, if there's site maps, there's a whole study of site map design. What about when you get a 404? You've already had this, right? You throw an error and you come to a page. Are you going to dump them in a site map? Or are you going to dump them? Are you going to guess what they, how they got here best? Are you going to give them a partial site map? Are you going to send them to the home page? What are you going to do? So the, there is a question: Do you put a site map on the pages? It's a navigational element, right? You're not going to put it at the top. In the very early days, they put it at the top. Just testimony to the fact they didn't know how to design. But now if you put it, you put it on the bottom somewhere and all that stuff. OK. Uh, and will you use uh, uh, images or icons or just words? We all like images. We like them more and more. We even have video now, but you've got to have some words somewhere. All right. So when you look at the information architecture and you ask for the structure of my content, it's going to be in terms of categories of content, the categories. And now, what is the design? So taxonomies are typically some kind of hierarchical structure. In the case of biology, the taxonomy is such that no child group can have more than one parent. If you're a fungus, you can't also be, you can be a living organism, but you can't also be a karyote or whatever they're called. Okay, you can't be one of those. Only one kind of parent. OK, so that's a hierarchy. And you all know what they look like. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The bottom ones are the leaves. The top is the root. This is 0, 1, 2, 3. But we, so we call this primary navigation. All right. A uh, textbook breaks it into chapters. Chapters have structure, too. They have headings and subheadings. So that's still a, uh, but if it's a hypertext book, then some of the sections can be in multiple chapters. Because in hypertext, you just got to get to what you're interested in. It doesn't matter. We're not trying to save pages. We're trying to get the information in the right place. Now, if we choose to get information in the right place, and I can come down two paths to get to this information, then I have a structure like that. This diamond. It's 
So the top, top level entity is called a connected graph. We have nodes and we have links. In a, here's an unconnected graph, so we don't want those because we want to be able to get to them. So we're not going to have the most general kind of graph, but we're going to have this. And now there are questions as to whether child, whether it's connected like that, and so on. So here is one kind of graph. We have graphs that are or bidirectional. This is a totally connected graph. Did I miss any? No, so it's a totally connected graph. It's bidirectional. This one isn't bidirectional. I mean, it isn't, uh, it could be bidirectional, but it depends. But uh, uh, it's not totally connected. Well, so far it, it is, but now it's not. But it does have at least this thing. So when you take a graph, we went from, we went from this simple highly constrained graph to a less constrained graph to a less constrained graph. These are more general now. This is called a lattice structure. Lattices allow us to have multiple children, multiple parents. So it's far more flexible. And most uh, all sites now are uh, lattices in one form or another. OK. Uh, the navigation is where I put the information and how I put the information. So we've had a look at this stuff already. Am I at the wrong? Did I do this? Yeah, I've done this one. I'm not the, in the slide that I want to be in. OK. Well, it's the same topic, but I have different stuff I want to be covering with you today. Oh, I'm not going to find it there. Why don't you go back to your home page and uh, did I give you, oh yeah, I better look at my machine to see why it was. This is lecture 10? Uh, this is when you upload it. Is that so? Uh-huh. Well, that's a bore. Um, oh, it's lecture 7. All right, okay. My mistake. It's this one. All right. Is it in files, do you know? I don't think it is. I, I was just bringing it in because uh, it should have been in, but it wasn't. And so I'm going to remove that link. I'm going to go to files. I'm going to go to lectures 2021. I think I must have just touched the wrong one. I got the, the uh... I think if you go to files and you see lecture 10, I think I just put the wrong label. I, I think I just got the wrong URL. Yeah, if you go to put the right label up. OK. Well, what I've been talking about, I am actually going to be covering. So I have not given you uh, redundant information. It's worth it. This is the heart of the matter. And we're going to look at um, uh, some navigational methods that people use and some of the changes that happened. And then we're going to call it a day. And you're going to get to your work. So we're going to nuke that one. Uh, and go to files. Do you want me to put it up? That, that looks like it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Maximize, make it so.
uh, say, you know, share, do the do, yeah. So you're showing, you're not maximizing. You know. Okay, fine, thank you very much. Let's go to some pages. Whoa, this is all janky. Janky. Is it showing up? Is it still capturing up there? All right, so look here. So I did this a couple of years ago. I'm sure it's different now. The information architectures change over time, right? They get stale, people want new things. But here, look. So here on this page, total line, I don't know what it looks like right now, but total line, they have this big drop down. It was 2017 probably. So uh, we have wine, wine types, red wine, white wine, sparkling, and so on. Then we have varietals. Then we have, but by country, we have popular regions, and then we have resources. So that's under wine, right? I guess they have something other than wine, right? They have spirits, they have beer, and they have more. Now under the wine, the primary navigation is going to be the types of wine, the varietals of wine, which is by the grape type. They have it organized by country. And then they have it organized by region. So that's a, those are primary navigation at the second, at the third level under the wine. And then if we go to red wine, we're going to see something else. So now I click on wine. I don't choose anything in there. But I click on, now this, by the way, was another decision you will make as a, a navigation uh, designer. Suppose I have wine, I mouse over wine, I get a drop down of all that stuff. Do I make a separate page called wine? So if I click on wine, I have to go to a page on wine, or does wine not actually go to a page, and I force them to go right in here? That's always a decision. You keep defining these other levels, and then you say, wait a second, this is totally redundant. Why don't they just go from all my navigation here? So as a, as a designer, that's one of your topics you have to uh, sort of take a stand on. Here I go to wine, and so I click on wine, and what? What? Where, where, where does this, what, why does this look different than those categories? So I see I've got wines. I, the first thing I see, I don't see any subs underneath it. I'm keeping my primary secondary navigation. I must have cut off the very top of the uh, menu, I think. Looks like there's more there, but maybe not. They certainly should have kept total wine, but maybe they didn't keep that, which is bizarre, but let's suppose they didn't. Uh, then uh, I see I'm in Moscata Vineyards. So, of course, if they are sniffing my location, they could be customizing and personalizing. So that's a whole universe no more of navigational considerations that are invisible because you're making assumptions on the basis of where the person is. But suppose they're not sniffing. Uh, why are they showing me Moscato Vineyards? Then it says view all wine. And now we've got the categories. So they're calling them categories. There they call them types. Here they're calling them categories. So why do they change from types to categories? Then they, we go down there. They have red, red, white, white, champagne. Oh, there it's called sparkling wine and champagne. Here it's called champagne and sparkling wine. Why do they swap that, that around? These are all errors, right? You want to manage, you force consistency. If you want it to be sparkling wine first, decide it's going to be sparkling wine. If you decide it's going to be champagne first, you decide it's going to be champagne first. But you don't swap around. So that's consistency. Then we have dessert and fortified, rosé and blush. We don't show sake and plum. We don't show fruit. We say view all wine. 
Here they have view more. OK, they want to make a decision as to what they're going to show. That's their business. That's OK. Now we come to country and state. Did they call it country and state over here? What they called it top countries and states. So why are they calling it? Why didn't they call it countries and country and state over there? They changed it again. This is naughty. You don't do that. You're the boss. You tell them. Why don't you follow basic instructions? So. Uh, of course, we never talk that way to you. But you talk politely but sternly to them and say, didn't you learn anything? So uh, consistency, you know, is so important. And now, where's the rest? Where are my varietals? Where are my popular regions? Maybe they're down below, but all right. So they're making lots of navigational decisions badly. Because this is pretty close to their architecture. But you can see the labels. They can flip and flop on the labels. They shouldn't, but they could flip and flop on them. So you know, therefore, the label and the architectural category is not the same. The label is meant to be a good idea of what the semantics of the category is. But that doesn't mean that you know, it's one and done. There could be. Different ways in different places we want to refer to that category, but not on the sides. We would keep consistency. OK. So uh, here they have, we have BevMo versus somebody else. Oh, I see the, the other guy. What are they called? Wine. They were called uh, Total Wine. We have BevMo. So here we are comparing these two. And uh, oh, look at that, canned wine. I, I, I'm not sure if this is over time that we move from something as wonderful and delightful as artisanal champagnes. Uh, though you'll notice it's after other wine and it's after champagne. This is like really bizarre, right? Artisanal champagne is a type of champagne. But we have artisanal champagne up at the same level as if it's a secondary, as, as if it's a tertiary category like that. Why are they doing that? Don't they have any idea about the hierarchy? But then they're saying, no, 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 we have multiple reasons for doing high, uh, hierarchies the way we want. So maybe we're going to make it like this. This is champagne and artisanal wine, or whatever it was. Oh, then they had artisanal champagne, which should be down here, and maybe it is down here, but it's also over here. So what does that mean? We have artisanal. Champagne. And that's the structure. That's the graph structure, isn't it? OK. Well, you didn't expect it to be absolutely trivial, did you? There's something to be learned about in this field. So they're doing these things. Now, are these good ideas? Now, that's a cognitive question. So they seem now they, they, they are driven by one goal. Sales. So if the bottom line is, if I put artisanal champagne in my types, my wine types, am I going to sell more artisanal champagne than if I put it in my under champagne alone? And am I going to be damaging somebody else? Remember that Pareto requirement? So you don't make a change. Yeah, yeah, maybe you'll sell more artisanal champagne, but maybe you're going to sell less canned wine. You're going to sell to something else. Because suppose I only have seven slots I want to give. Or I decide to have eight slots, but the consequence is that people don't use it. They say, oh, too many. I'm not going to look in there. So all of these are the hard questions that you need to have statistics for. And you have to tie your statistics to the bottom line. And that's what they're doing. 
So as designers, we say in general that's not the right idea, but we're sensitive to what you're saying. And here they just said they got more reasonable. They said artisanal champagne. That should be under champagne. Let's have this other thing that didn't uh, canned wines, which of course we might mean as boxed wines. Do you ever get cans of wine? Oh, yeah, you get cans now, don't you? You get cans of wine? No, you don't get. OK. They are available cans of wine, yeah? Like beer. A big can, but it's wine. All right. I guess canned wine is a popular thing then. And so now, uh, in the old days, they just used to be big boxes. They weren't little boxes, so a canned wine could be just 8 ounces or 12 ounces. Fine. This is the reality of life that you see every day. Look at how they're doing the categories here. They're, they're structuring it, too. These are all navigational considerations. These are visual considerations, how we show it. We're, we're, we're you know, flagging these things in certain sort of ways. There, that's a twisty. You open that, you get the drop down. So that's a na navigational mechanism. They probably don't want to, so you have to decide, am I going to default? to closed or open. If you default to closed under category, I don't even know what they mean when they say category. If they called it wine types, I would know. I have a better idea what it means. But they say category, I don't even know what they mean. It's such a general term. So all of these are the way you would criticize and discuss, politely discuss, the propriety, the wisdom, of uh, the advisability of choosing, choosing certain labels. Uh, we are done there. Oh, yeah. So here in 2019, they went from this to kosher wine and fruit wine. So they change over time, right? Just like they had canned wine. Over here, canned wine. Well, we've looked at this. The hierarchy, there's no redundancy. We can visualize hierarchy in different ways. And some websites have tried to do it this way. Now, the advantage, it's, it's less obvious what's going on because this is so familiar to us. But of course, this is perfectly acceptable. And the advantage of this is that often they use something that they was called hyperbolic lens. A how many of you know what I'm talking about when I say a hyperbolic lens? OK, so a hyperbolic lens is when I put my mouse over it, and where I put my mouse over, it zooms up and makes the other stuff small. So I can run my mouse over this in different areas, and I get a zoom, and then I can come out so I can see exactly where it is. And it was, uh, you know, had a moment of fashion for a little while, never got popular. And people have tried that out. There are different ways of visualizing a hierarchy. There are advantages in that uh, it's hyperbolic means the edges are you have lots of stuff around the edges that are hard to distinguish, but where you're interested is the focus. So it's a difference between a center and periphery. We have uh, these. Uh, this is so, um, in this case, we're looking at the modularity of the uh, system. And it's a connected graph, and it's a lattice. Uh, and, uh, but, there's only a couple of lines that go to that one over there. So that's how we define a module. In general, the concept of a module is not trivial to, dis to uh, define, but the most popular way of defining a module is that the interactions between modules are far less frequent than the interactions within modules. So if you imagine that as a module, there's a lot of moving around inside there. But if you want to leave this place, there's only one or two exits. But there's a lot of stuff, a lot of corridors inside there. So you're inside one building. There's an exit to the building. There's an entrance to the building. Usually it's the same thing, but it could be multiple. But not many. But there's lots of corridors inside the building. So it's a modular thing. That's what we mean by a modular. And here you can see this is modular. So these are general concepts. And invariably, when we have a complicated site, we need something more complicated than just a simple hierarchy or even a complicated hierarchy. And the reason we need that, we're going to need a lattice of some sort. And this was sort of appreciated from about the year 
2000, 2005 on, we always have user types as well as category types, topics. So here we've got the standard categories, and here we have for students, for prospective students, for faculty, for staff, for Cal parents, for alumni and friends. So this is, this is not sort of just about students. It's really for students. Now, if we look at what that means, I've already told you that, we have here, essentially, we have a whole bunch pointing to here. To, here's the stuff below it, let's say. Well, these things could reach into any of the ones below it. So whatever is coming through a topic to all these pages, if we come through students, they also can reach into pages. So it's a lattice. Here are the user. Or better to think of it, the students are coming like the the user types are coming like this, and the topics are coming down like that, and we're pointing in the way we want. It's a more matrix kind of approach. So it's orthogonal, multi-trees, orthogonal navigation, whatever you want to call it. But here's a way of doing it. I show it like that. All right. Now. Just before, we have a bit more to cover, but not that much. Here's something in this day and age, as of 2017, it's closed. But the open directory was the biggest project of navigation uh, in the world. Certainly web navigation, but probably the biggest. It's hard for me to say, you know, mapping is a very big topic in navigation. And these, comp these navigational, these lattices are really complicated. So Yahoo starts out in a garage. And in Yahoo, they were trying to classify the web. Mid-late 90s, they're classifying the web. There probably weren't more than a million sites at the very beginning, maybe less. So they're trying to classify them. They don't care about the crappy sites. They're only going after the good sites. They're looking for a classification. And Yahoo was going to curate the web. Curation, very popular now. It means you know picking and choosing, deciding what other people see. You go to the museum, a curator chooses what you see. Art gallery, curator. An installation of stuff, they curate the information. OK, so they curate it. And then it got bigger and bigger. And then Google comes along and says, Google says, you can't do this. You can't classify all that stuff, even if you let people do it for free. And this was what the, was what the Open Directory project was, was letting people ed recommend sites and classify the sites. So they might have had several thousand people working on it. Maybe more. I don't know how many ever did it. Now, the point I want to show discuss with you is, here was, here's where their major topics are. Arts, business, computers, games. So here are what they think are the, the major categories. By the way, Google, it uses this. It just inhaled it. It just inhaled all that stuff, and it goes into their page rank. So somebody thinks that these are the sites that you should be thinking about. Google says, OK, I'll give you a little number for that. It's not Google's primary algorithm, but they wanted to not ignore it. Just like they say, oh, you know what? Uh, the primary algorithm says that we should uh, assign a weighting to a given page on the basis of who recommends it, how many people, and who. And the weighting we give the page is not just how much, but how heavily we should uh, weight the recommendation. And normally, the way they do that is by the number of people who are recommending that site. So if a site that gets zillions of people recommends that site, and they say, oh, you should check this, then that link from them is worth a lot more than some random person who links to the site. Fine, Google's algorithm. Except that it's not just Google's algorithm. If you are an academic at a university, or the university makes a reference, that's a trusted authority. 
So they are priors on the notion of trust. Not just, not just the sort of crowd values on the notion of trust, they're priors. So they gave a lot of priors to Demos. Now, if, I didn't, if you didn't see arts, what do you think you would find under arts? Do you think you would find television? What else is there? Let me see if I can pop out for a second. Sorry for using your computer. Where's your actual browser? Brave. Oh my god. I never even heard of Brave. Let's see if we can find demos.org. Ooh. Can somebody find Demos for me, please? Oh, okay. Sorry. I don't mean to be poking around your, your world. Lord knows what we could come across, right? Um, okay, let's go into Google, which I, since you're not in their browser, it's not defaulting to that. Well, it did, but it, it went, tried to get me to, it gave me a bad request. So now I'm going to go to Demos. Demos categories. Whoa. All right. So let's go to the directory. Here we are. So here we are on Demos. Why don't you drive for a second? It'll be more fun. OK, I want to teach you one thing. Only a small percentage of you are going to guess. All right, uh, where is it? Oh, so make it the, well, it'll make your whole desktop then visible. That's how you have to do that. Right. Uh, yeah, desktop. OK. Somebody sees this on Zoom? Yeah, just check, please. Someone confirm kindly. Yeah, you see this in your desk on Zoom? Yeah, OK, thanks. All right. So what do you want to find out about? Choose a topic. Let's find out about it. Let's do it together. Oh, OK. What do you want to know? Acoustics? You just heard something like that? That wasn't acoustics, but OK. So where are you going to find acoustics? Under what? Arts, acoustics. OK, one category. See, I'm going to put it under science, but you could go, or under engineering, but we could go either. I don't even see engineering here. OK, so, well, try science. Amuse me. OK, we don't see acoustics yet. Where are you going to find acoustics? Maybe physics? Uh, stuff like that? OK, try physics. Now, wait a sec, wait a sec, wait a sec. Look, OK, look at the, uh, there it is. OK, so look, it says science, physics. Yeah? Watch the breadcrumb. Now, look, we have uh, under the subcategories, it says there are 47 folders. Uh, it doesn't look like 47 folders to me. It looks like 47 topics. And some of those look like they're folders, and some of them look like they are non-folders. Let's go to acoustics. Can you see acoustics there? Whoa, OK. Now, we go in here. And uh, how about audio sound clips? OK. Now, wait a second. What happened to my navigation up top there? Did anyone notice a change? I, I suddenly am not in science. I'm, I'm now in science technology. 
So remember, pretend this was science, technology, acoustics. But when I was at science, I, or did I have to go to physics? Did I have to go to physics first? OK, so it was science, physics. At physics, I was acoustics. But when I come here, it says that the canonical path is through technology. Science, technology, acoustics. Remember I wanted engineering, but they didn't give me engineering? So, and then it goes ultrasound and vibration? Why isn't that showing me anything here? It gives me related categories. So here we see the difficulty in coming up with breadcrumbs. When you have multiple bread, when you have multiple paths to the same destination, you have to figure out what breadcrumb to use. Is it going to be the one you followed? What if I went da 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 and I end over here? But this it's just two steps from the home. Right? I followed this, I got interested in this, I followed this, I got interested in this, just the way we ordinarily are, but it's only two steps from home. You can't very well use my path because my path could have gone anywhere, completely outside of this thing and eventually end up here. So I have to use something like a canonical path or the shortest path. And that's a decision you have to make. Or are you going to show multiple paths? To know. Now, this is uh, more recent than the one I usually look at. So let me go home. Uh, home. Why don't you go home? That should be. OK. Suppose I go into arts. So I want to show you one thing. Except what I actually wanted to show you was what we just were, what I did just show you. Suppose I go, OK, arts, aesthetics, oh, society, philosophy, aesthetics. Now, as a matter of fact, Demos used to show with a little uh, uh, mark that uh, used to use an, an, uh, an at sign to show that you were going to go into a different canonical path. They don't show that anymore, unless that's what this thing meant. Let's see, we can go back. Literary theory, is that going to be a child, or is it going to be? Yeah, so that, they're now using that little mark to mean it's changing its canonical path. So it's not easy, really, what's going on. And these big things, it's not easy what is happening. This should be visible. This is visible, correct? In Zoom? Sorry? Yeah, I know you can't tell. Can somebody just confirm this is visible on Zoom? Yes, thank you. Speak up and let us know, because otherwise I don't see. Thank you, if you'd be kind enough. All right. So we have canonical paths and actual paths. I've told you already what uh, fully connected means. And the problem with fully connection is that it's, navigation is almost impossible because any link connects to anything else. So we always want to modularize it to some respect to uh, make the paths more comprehensible. Imagine an utter maze where every time you go to one, you make one path, all of them, they're always all available to you. Not all paths, but to all destinations. No matter where you are, all destinations are available. That is just no good. All right. So you have learned what this is. And now let's just finish with labeling. And then, uh, so the label is the texty bit. That is a name for the category. We want you to be consistent. You saw the problem with that. Uh, if you're going to use verbs, then use verbs. If you're going to use nouns, use nouns. Don't flop about. Uh, if you're going to call it home, you call it home. In the old days, people sometimes used to call it Maine, believe it or not. And so they would do, you know, it'd just be irritating. So there are natural conventions. You should follow conventions. And don't mix them around. 
So these are the conventions. Uh, if it's contact us, then contact us. Uh, what's new about us and so on. Um, but don't, don't, don't be too creative in this. If you have a big topic, it's specific and people aren't going to get it from one or two words, it can't appear in your navigation with 20 words, but you might decide that you're going to put that in the body as a way of getting people to that page. And don't use jargon. I think that's it. So that's my talk on navigation for you. It's the talk given to you by someone who has bumped into this problem very many times. And I am open for questions if you have any. Any questions? OK, you have teams? You want to do a little work? You got 15 minutes? Why don't you do a little work? And we'll be happy to float if you have a question or you want to talk about your topic get my advice or get our distinguished TA's advice. We're here at your service.